Hey, this is Aaron with Faith to Walk Ministries, and finally my video about writing in the Schuyler Canterbury Red Letter with the 28 GSM paper. It has been a journey. Learn some more about the characteristics of the 28 GSM paper and writing in it. Let you know right off the bat, I have fell in love with this new Schuyler Canterbury um, with the red letter, the 28 GSM paper, because it has made the Bible a thinner footprint and it's lighter as well. It's really great if you're just going to read. Sometimes you like reading by holding your Bible, walking around, or if you're teaching and preaching, it just makes it a whole lot easier to hold. And so, just let you know, um, the paper is very nice paper. It is, let you see where it's from, supplied by the Pepitres de Le Monde, the non les Bens in France. And I probably mispronounced that really bad. Uh, but it's a very nice paper. It does have the titanium mixed in with it. Of course, this Bible is line matched, so that really helps a lot. And it's still very opaque. So that's the first thing that is nice. This is probably the most expensive paper, the best paper out there. And so I enjoy it a lot. Now, some people are going to ask, what's the black ribbons? I, for longevity, you can use the ribbons. I, I just tuck mine in and I put some thicker ones in. Um, I just lay them in. I don't, you know, break open the, you know, the head headband and put it in there. I just laid in there. So let's uh, dive right in and tell you some things about what I have learned. So the characteristics, once again, it is the thinner paper, which makes the footprint of the Bible thinner and lighter. I love the original Canterbury. It's my 36 GSM. It's been my everyday wear test since May 15th. I wanted to do notes because November 15th is when I stopped the wear test on this one. And I, I, I'm going to start using this one for my everyday carry because, well, it is lighter. Some of the things to keep in mind about the 28 GSM paper. One thing to be careful of, especially if you're used to the heavier paper, is the heavier paper, you can start turning your page up here and just flipping the thinner paper you flip through. And sometimes you barely have it and it flipped through well. I have dogged eared a couple of these. I go to flip it, and right there, dog ear, starts the dog ear, starts creasing the page. So I've done that multiple times going through this Bible writing notes. So a couple of things to think about, you know, when you do the dog ear, try to just uh, run your finger the opposite direction. Sometimes if it's a real bed, you can not completely fold it the other way, but just fold it a little bit and that sometimes will work itself out, not as easily as the 36 GSM paper, but as sometimes it'll work it out. So what do you do? Get yourself in a habit. If you're ever gonna turn one page, grab more of the page to flip. It's taken me a little bit, and I still forget if I'm going through really quick to find a passage, sometimes I still forget, but just take more of the page. The reason for that is the corner, because it's a lighter pa paper, the corner is, it doesn't give you the, enough weight sometimes to turn the whole page. It'll just curl right over and pow, you got a dog ear. Um, so just take a little bit more of the page to flip it. What's also what's interesting about this is when I'm just going through the Bible to get to a passage, you know, you have to turn more in that one. So sometimes in this one, you go to a certain passage, you turn and you're all you're way past it. You're like, oh yeah, thinner pages. So you'd have to keep in mind, you don't have to turn as much. Um, so that's another thing about that Bible. A couple other things to keep in mind, a lot of people have commented on their pages curling. So what that means is if you live in a place or if you have a house that has dry air, where there's not very much humidity, or even the winter time when we start using our heaters, uh, if you use wood stoves, that's gonna make a dry heat. Dry heat will take any of the moisture out of your page and start to make them curl. I uh, saw a guy that was doing some notes in his Bible, and it was curling everywhere. And so what do you do in a case like this? Well, besides move, <laughs> is buy a humidifier. So if you have dry heat, uh, dry air you live in, or you're using a wood stove, pellet stove, or maybe just a regular uh, 
gas heat, but it's drying out the house, just buy a humidifier. Run that in the house, and that will put more moisture in the air, which will help that curl to stop. Another thing, if you don't have a humidifier, you can do, a lot of people do this every day, is boil a pot of water or put some steaming water on the stove just to get a little bit more moisture in the air. So that has happened. Another thing I want to suggest when you're reading your Bible, and now a lot of people, they read their Bible with that cup of coffee. Keep liquids away from this Bible. Keep liquids away. I've gotten a drop in this one, the 36 GSM, and quickly just kind of, not screw and rub it, but just dabbed it really quick, blew on it, it dried pretty quickly. But with this one being such a lighter paper, I think the water effects of being some kind of moisture on this, even though it will dry, you're still gonna have that, that effect. Um, and it might be even worse than the GS, 36 GSM paper. So be careful of any liquids. If you're gonna take your Bible uh, to church and other places like this, this is gonna be my everyday, everyday carry. And you can ask my lady, my wife, I carry my Bible everywhere. And I found this one not bad. It's, it's a, just a, probably not any real leather, although it feels like it, but it covers the whole thing. I choose one without a zipper inside, so there's no zipper compartments that the zipper will actually rub against the outer part of the Bible. And so that keeps it from rain because I was at church the other day with this one. Sure enough, it was raining, but my Bible bag grabbed all the moisture, did not touch my Bible. So you want to do that. So if you're going to write in your any Bible, but especially the 28 GSM paper, you got to get it in your mind a couple things. Get the mindset that you are making this your workhorse Bible that you're going to be be careful with it because once again it is a premium bible they're beautiful i'm not going to go into all the aspects right now i have a video on the review of this bible but what i mean when you're going to write in it and i'm going to say this again a little bit you're going to mess up you're going to mess up and so instead of thinking oh this is going to be premium i could be dainty and and careful just these are made like tanks they are made quite quality, premium, craftsmanship, material, the best Bibles, these premium Bibles out there, the best Bibles in the world. And so if you're going to write in it, just get it in your mind. It's going to be your workhorse Bible. Get that in your mind. The second thing I want you to get in your mind is you're going to make mistakes. Your handwriting is not going to be perfect. Something's going to happen. The dog might bark and it scares you and you mess up a letter or the kids might run in the and bump your arm or... You know, there's a lot of things that can happen. Or you're, if you're like me, there's certain letters you don't print very well. E's. Um, when I do an E, a lot of times the, the, the top of the E is not very good. And so I'll try to do it again. And I, you'll see, I, I mess up, I mess up on E's quite regularly. And if somebody looks at my Bible and say, hey, he had a problem with E's. And I do. And so once again, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna make mistakes. Like I'll just show you like this right here, return. I just mess up right there, priest. I messed up, I had to do it again. Generations, I started messing up on an E, I had to do it again. E's, I got a problem with these. I gotta practice. So the, you just keep in your mind, you're gonna make mistakes. So what did I use? I used the Pigma Micron 005. I practiced in other Bibles with uh, the 01, the 05. The 005 to me is the best one to use. Also use a clear ruler. I think clear is ruler is the better and then just a regular ruler, ruler because you see this, you can see the spacing between the lines when you're underlining. Now, I think the 05 you could probably use pretty good in this. I think it would be fine. And pencils, I do definitely believe will be fine as well. One thing I would steer away from because you don't want anything liquid based. Um, and even some highlighters are good, but I tell you what, if you can stay away from highlighters, I think you would do yourself a favor to stay away from highlighters. Uh, some of you might just love highlighters and you don't mind a page kind of uh, doing that little wrinkly sometimes. Go ahead and do it. Personally, I probably would never use a highlighter in this Bible. Now, if you're going to underline, now I'm going to show you one of the first mistakes I, I made. 
and it cringed me at first because once again, I'm like you, everything is very prim and proper and I gotta be careful with everything. When it happened, I did cringe a little bit. I was like, oh, you gotta be kidding. But hey, it may happen to you. So when you are underlining, I would suggest never have your pen in an upright position or even your pencil. Always go with an angle. So I would underline, put my ruler and I would underline at an angle. Sometimes if it was the, the line was getting a little light, I would lift it up just a tad bit to get a little bit darker, maybe put a little bit of pressure. Over here, there's two mistakes I did over here. The first mistake is I had the pin up too high. The second mistake, and I'm gonna suggest this right now when you're doing that, make sure your pages are flush against the back pages. And what I mean by that is I had this page and I think that was, they had a little bit of air gap between this page and the page under it. So when I did it, I noticed, uh-oh, it felt a little weird right there. I was like, I didn't like that feeling. I didn't like that feeling at all. So I turned to the back page and sure enough, right here, <sighs> yeah, I could see the page was, it wasn't a total hole, but you could tell there was a good size poke about to come through. Um, so even if you made a hole, that's why a couple things would do, make sure you go at an angle. If you're using a pencil, do not, have a very sharp point. If you just sharpen your pencil, make sure you dull it on another piece of paper. Get that get that point rounded before you do anything because that would help prevent poking. So I knew I had to do something. So if you can tell, I did have to do something here because I tried to just underline the next page because the, the next page had a verse I had to underline anyway, the same spot. It still didn't work. It was, I could tell, a period of time that was going to rip. So, here's what you use. Got this at a store, at an art store. It's called a Lenico, Lenico Transparent Mending Tape, Archival Quality. Now, definitely get this. You can get it from Amazon or uh, if you have a craft supply store. Safe, easy to use, pH neutral. And repairs, tears, and paper. Libraries use this. A lot of places use this for their books. It's very nice. It mends very well. And so on this one, I did put some tape on this side. But I did put some tape on the other side too. To make sure that little hole that was starting. In fact, here's where it was. Right under God. So make sure that hole that was starting is not going to increase. So that is something to keep in mind. So keep that pen at an angle. And if you're using a pencil, make sure it's not really sharp when you're doing that. When you're using this, um, now for knife sharp points, I got something like this from the same craft supply store so I could cut it in very fine ways. After you get the tape down, you don't wanna really use your fingers to do that, so I use this. And you just rub this over it, rub this over it, just barely angle to tiny bit just to get any kind of creases out and that works perfectly now that reminds me of something else a lot of people when you get a bible and after a period of time using it you'll get what they call the crinkle page i have some bibles even some premium bibles that have the infamous crinkle page what do you do well if you get the crinkle page you can use this same transparent mending tissue and you can put it right on the crinkle and that will flatten it out and help now another thing that a lot of people i've seen do is they'll take like sticky sticky notes post notes and they will cut it and put it along the back of this page and what that does it gives it some more structure so it may prevent the crinkle page from ever happening i'm still in the habit of every time i close my bible to make sure this is not crinkled before i close it front and back. I do that every time. It's just a habit now. So keep that in mind. Once again, mistakes are going to be made. Now, I'm not going to show you all my mistakes. That would take all day long. But there's just a couple, a couple uh, points I want to show you. One is in Isaiah 3. Don't fear mistakes. Sometimes you have to do your first one. You're like, eh, oh, well, and you just go on. 
Once again, you're gonna mess up. I messed up on a six. Uh, it looked kind of weird, almost like a B. I tried to correct it, didn't look right. Tried to correct it, didn't look right. Don't be fearful just to write the verse again. I wrote it above it, just, you know, that's what I do. I could probably figure that out, but I thought, you know something, if I ever pass this down, a person's like, what? Oh, is that a G? Is that a six? You know, I don't. I just went ahead and wrote it again. So don't fear doing that. Another mess up is right here. So I was meant to put the note for Daniel chapter 9, 26, 27. So I wrote it out here. Well, then I realized, guess what? Chapter 9, verse 26 is not even on these pages. I wrote it on the wrong note. Hey, here's the key. Don't do your notes when you're really tired. Do it when you're more awake. And so I had to put, <laughs> I was meant to put note for 9, 26, 27. I accidentally put 10, 26, 27. So it's a double mistake. Wrong page. Then made a mistake here. Scratched out 9, 26, 27. And then on 9, 26, 27, I wrote it out again. You know, it happens. Another thing you're going to do, especially if you're underlining, you're going to accidentally do it. I'm telling you, something's going to happen. You're going to sneeze. You're going to cough. Something's going to happen. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Romans chapter 1, verse 19. Yep. Man. Something's going to happen. I can't remember if that was a cough, a sneeze, or my hand slipped. You're going to underline right through a word or two. That's what do you do. You just do it again. And don't worry about it. You can still read it. It's to the word of God. So don't sweat it. it. Things like that is just going to happen. Sometimes other things happen. You're going to get tired. I started getting tired in Romans one night. It was the last book I was going to do for the night. And close to about 10 o'clock at night. I get up very early. And sometimes you miss words. So I was writing this one out. Jesus Christ specifically called the Savior 16 times. And, but the but Lord, I was like, what did I just write? Totally missed a few words. Times, to scratch it out. In the New Testament, and the Lord more than 450 times. So, like I said, mistakes are going to happen. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just uh, keep going. And so I uh, just encourage you in that. So don't be afraid of it. It is meant to be used. All right, next thing we're going to look about is um, there is see-through, but there is no bleed-through. Now, going back uh, even to the first notes I started, I'm going to show you... Uh, even in Genesis. See? There is see-through, or some call it ghosting, but there is no bleed-through. And I'm going to show you an example of what bleed-through is. See? And I even messed up there and, you know, got that three a little dark. Just kept doing it until I got it right. Show it through, no bleed through. Like I said, a lot of people get that confused. They think, uh, see, here's a dark one. I messed up the eight. I tried to eight and I tried to eight, try to correct it and it just looked like two big old black blobs. And write it again. But look, show it through, no bleed through. And what do I mean by that? Show through is that. Just like I showed you where you can see it from the other side. Bleed through is when you have a word on the other page and your ink starts to come through the paper. Now, I did this as an example. And you start to see the ink on the other side of the paper, the page, come through. Like, if you're writing something like that, and you start to see dots, dots of ink coming through. That's bleed through. It's actually going through holes of the paper to the other side. Cheaper paper, you're, you're going to see that. These you will not. I mean, just look at that. Show through, no bleed through. Let me see, and there's another example I'll show you. Yeah, like here. Okay. I kept messing up. 
That's pretty dark. Okay. That's pretty dark. Show through. No bleed through. It's important. Also, be careful that you don't curl a page when you rest your arm to do your notes. And for instance, I had a couple pages. I'm not going to find it right now. Where well, the page evidently was moved up like this. And when I went to do my notes, my, my arm was resting on that page and creased it. Um, easiest way to do that, you know, once again, I've mentioned before, if that crease happens, just kind of try to fold it the other way a little bit and try to work it out. You can also, another thing you can do if you have creases in your Bible, you can set it down and put a whole bunch of books on top of it. Let it sit there for maybe a day or two. That way sometimes we'll get that crease out. I've had some Bibles where that has worked. But once again, it's going to be your everyday Bible and you're going to get more creases in it. So once again, don't worry about it. And the last thing I want to point out is note placement. Always know where you need to put your notes and what's going to fit. So like on here, I have 1 Timothy and I have some notes here. And I cut, I have some first notes I could put and I could put it there. It just would have been mangled and just, I would have had to write too small, jump it together. In the, at least in a Schuyler Canterbury, the books start on a new page. So what I do, put a little thing here, more notes at the end of, see, I messed up there, of 1 Timothy. So we'll just go to the end of 1 Timothy. And there's my note, more notes. So note placement's important as well. And then I'll show you in Revelation what I did there. Mess up. Like, don't worry about those. It's going to happen. It's going to be your workhorse Bible, so don't worry about that. You're going to have dog ears. If you have rip pages, you can always use that tape to fix them. So I have that there, and I put more notes in notes section. Now, I got to the point where some of my notes, like for chapter four, I knew I couldn't get it all at the bottom page because I already had there. So I put notes at the end of Revelation. So I'm utilizing two things here. So we have a note section and the Canterbury, and we have the back of the book. So the back of the book, I put some notes there. Actually, the pages are thin. Got used to that. There we go. So that's note on Revelation 4, 2. And then you have some note pages back here. Steps to Peace with God. So I have that. Statement of Faith, Core Doctrines. And then I had more notes for 2 Timothy. And I put more notes on the next note section for there. So I have more notes there. Then... First Peter, and I messed up here because <laughs> I, was, I was copying them from, like I said, transferring the notes from one Bible to another. And First Peter, the theme is there, and then all this is supposed to be. And I just kind of <laughs> just copied the notes as is. Still didn't get that corrected, but all the information is there. Revelation, more notes at the end of in the note section. So that's or that is more notes on the next page. we go messed up so does the Skylar Canterbury 28 GSM paper I think the Quintels are 28 GSM papers well they take notes very well just understand the 28 GSM paper has different characteristics and different things to keep in mind while you're writing in the Bible kind of follow those rules you know and troubleshoot your own um, you can use of course you can use whatever you want it's your Bible uh, if you have some different experiences with this paper and things to avoid, things maybe you can do, maybe even some highlighters that you notice do not cause any damage with the 28 GSM paper, leave that in the comments. I hope this has blessed somebody to start writing in your Bibles. Um, if you get to the point where you just, you just can't, you can't do it, you can't, you, you can't, well then don't. <laughs> That's a simple fact, then, then don't. Or, or if you're too afraid to mess up one, hey, save your money, get a backup copy. Keep that one pristine in your box and get another one for your workhorse. Uh, uh, there's an idea. Hey, thank you for watching. God bless.